What do you think of when I say the South? Texas, Florida, Alabama. West Virginia. Anything below Virginia. Pause. Before you answer, recognize the American South has gone through a lot of changes, from how it's defined geographically, to trying to become its own nation, to some major demographic transformations. So how does all of that translate into who chooses to identify as a Southerner? Hey fam, I'm Imayan, and this Sunday on AJ Plus, we're unpacking the South, its history, and how it's evolved drastically over time. So get ready, because we're about to give you the sweet tea on Southern identity. long time, saying that you were Southern was synonymous with only one identity, as Professor H. Gibbs Knotts explains. Six years ago, it would have meant probably you're a white Southerner and probably you are a supporter of the current racial structure where African Americans were relegated to second class citizens. And there were still people who cling to this version of Southern identity. And yet, what it means to be Southern and seen as Southern has evolved. But before we can talk about who is a Southerner, we need to define where the South is, and that's been a point of contention. But still, Florida is not the South. Yes, it is. You probably would consider Florida South. I mean, that's the South as you can get in America. The Census Bureau breaks the United States into four regions. It defines the South not just by Alabama and Georgia, but also includes Maryland, Texas, and the nation's first state, Delaware. Delaware? Really? Yes, really. And there is another map of the region that outlines how the South has been divided historically by the Mason-Dixon line. It dates back to the Civil War when states in the southern part of the United States adamantly disagreed with the rest of the Union on slavery. In those states, agriculture, especially cotton, was the engine of the economy and slaves were the unpaid and abused labor that made it run. Slaves were treated inhumanely. They suffered deadly beatings, the decimation of their families, and forced labor without compensation. In many places, slaves were not allowed to learn to read or write. As the abolitionist movement spread, the North outlawed slavery and pressured Southern states to follow suit. But those states whose farming economy was dependent upon slaves, free labor, opposed ending the practice. Ending slavery wouldn't just change their economy, it would change their entire way of life. Because when you aren't paying your labor force, it makes a huge difference to your revenue. So the U.S. went to war with itself, and the United States was torn in two. Eleven states seceded from the Union, including Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. These states were serious about creating their own country and keeping slavery. The Confederate States of America established their own president and vice president, as well as their own flag, including the Confederate battle flag. So it's this early division in U.S. history that solidifies the identity of the Dixie South against those Yankees. The history dominated Southern identity for generations and even influenced how the South's history is learned and told today. There is a dark side to Southern identity. It's someone like Dylan Roof, the Charleston church shooter, who back in 2015 killed nine uh, individuals as they were at a Bible study at Emanuel AME Church in Charleston. This tragedy caused South Carolina to take the Confederate battle flag down from the state capitol. But today the conversation is also focused on Confederate statues. Supporters say these statues are to remember Southern history, but in reality, they aren't only in the South. They're also in places like Los Angeles and Washington State. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, most of these monuments went up during periods of extreme violence against black people, like at the height of the Jim Crow era and the civil rights movement. Some were even built as late as the 2010s. Now's a really great time to point out Confederate Commander Robert E. Lee opposed erecting memorials to the losing side. In fact, he wrote, my conviction is that however grateful it would be to the feelings of the South, the attempt in the present condition of the country would have the effect of retarding instead of accelerating its accomplishment and of continuing, if not adding to, the difficulties under which the Southern people labor. While new memorials have been erected, some of the older ones are coming down. Two Confederate statues coming down overnight in Lexington, Kentucky, where removal work began quietly without advance notice as the sun set. And Southern cities like New Orleans, Louisiana, and Charlottesville, Virginia, have decided to remove their Confederate monuments, those choices sparked fierce rebuttals by white nationalists claiming the removals are an attempt to erase their history. It's important to note that books 
are a great place to learn history. The South's history also includes the more than 55% of the country's black population which lives there. And that has resulted in a shift in who decides to identify as a Southerner. Southern identity didn't seem to be something that was driven by race in the way that it was a few decades ago. Blacks and whites were equally likely to say they were Southerners, and that was kind of one of our surprising and big findings. That's in large part to the changing demographics in the South and the movement of African Americans back to the region. After World War II, many African Americans left the South to go for better economic conditions, to escape discrimination. Since the 70s and certainly going into the 80s, there's been a net migration of African Americans back to the region. Many folks are coming for some of the same reasons other individuals move to the South for economic opportunities. There's a long cultural connection to the region. It does at least in part explain this strong connection to the South and Southern culture among African Americans. But what exactly is that culture and how is it defined? There's a lot of things that I think no matter who you are, people tend to have pretty good agreement on it. The food, manners, hospitality, a focus on the geography and nature of the South. And Southern states are believed to have a particular set of politics. The stereotype is that they vote Republican, are socially conservative, and go to church. I think people are increasingly in this modern era that we live in kind of building their own definition of what it means to be a Southerner. And the South, at least as a region, isn't becoming any less powerful. In fact, it may be getting more influential. We see you, North Carolina. It's growing, it's gaining congressional seats and, and gaining population. Given that younger folks are equally as likely to connect with the region and this tendency to want to defend the region, I think Southern identity and regional identity are really here to stay. The South is more than a place, a set of people, or politics. It's much more complicated. We spent a lot of time in the newsroom talking about what makes up the South and how we differentiate. For me, a key thing is whether a place serves sweet tea or not. I'm team sweet tea, what about you? Tell us in the comments what you would like us to cover next. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next Sunday when we have another awesome video. And sweet tea is the only tea.